Okay, so I'm back. It's just I'm gonna do a simple video for today as a welcome back video, I guess. But I'm gonna be breaking down in a simple guide on who I think you should start playing as in Dead by Daylight from my my standpoint view right now. I think I have about collectively about a thousand five hundred hours connected on Dead by Daylight across console and PC. But I'm not sure it doesn't make me fully pro. Don't listen to me fully. Don't listen to me if you don't want to. Just some advice on where I'm at right now. I will definitely make another video eventually on an updated guide and my different thoughts later. But right now, from where I'm at, <coughs> I will, uh, this is what it's going to be. So start, you're going to want to choose your character. You have Dwight, Meg, Claudette, Jake, Nia, Bill. David, and if you're on console, I'm pretty sure you get Fang and Ace for free. You're going to want to start picking your survivor, first of all. Quite obviously, you have to play who you want to. But, to break down these quickly, because it'll take a bit of time, a bit too much time to go over each and every one of them individually. White basically allows it so he can, he's a team player, basically. He allows teammates to do actions faster, and he can just support the team. Meg, she, uh, she has a perk that can make her vault stuff without a noise activation, and she's mainly based upon herself with quick movements and quick healing. Claudette, she's a healer. She's a, bo a bonist. And she can heal herself, she can heal others faster, and find injured people. Jake, he is mainly like a support type kind of based around himself. He's simple. He, he can sabotage hooks. He can not alert crows with one of his perks. Nia, in my opinion, she used to be pretty much amazing, but balance landing is pretty good. Uh, I don't know about you more though. Next, Bill. Bill is kind of on his own, but also a team player. Team player mix. He can borrow time. We've, if you've uh, played Dead by Dead for two hours, you've probably heard of this. Borrow time basically is amazing. It you can't go wrong with it. So you're gonna want to get it eventually along the road. So you're gonna want to play Bill eventually. David. Interesting character. I will go. It it's it's interesting he's mainly focused around helping your team and also helping yourself out but also messing yourself up now this is for the console people i'm pretty sure but unless you bought these characters for some reason off the bat ace ace uh, he only has one good perk i'd say i don't i do not suggest starting with him bang she is a all-around good uh good survivor not killer She's an all-around good survivor. She she's good at on generators. She's good in chase, and she helps get info on killers. Now, who do you want to pick across all these survivors? Personally, I'd say you'd want to play Dwight. Dwight is good only if you want to. You're beneficial to the team always, basically. Be able to get on generators, and you'll speed through. You'll find your team, so you can cooperate with them. Next would be Claudette, I'd say. Probably because of her healing capabilities. I am I know new players will draw, especially to the self-care perk. Healing yourself sounds amazing. It's not the greatest always, because it's pretty slow. But her other perks are also really good. You can see injured people with empathy. With botany knowledge, you get to heal people at additional speeds and self-care, as explained. But, and last pick, I'd say, is Nia. She has all-round good movement. Her balance landing, I'm not sh I'm pretty sure it got nerfed from when I last played. Balance landing used to be really good. I'm not sure about it now, but you gain a speed bonus when you fall from an additional height. I don't know what that height barrier is, but you will gain a speed bonus when you do, and then you will suffer from exhaustion. Bounce or her second perk is urban evasion. Urban evasion basically allows so when you're crouching, 
you will move at an additional rate, which is pretty nice when dodging the killer. I love it. Like uh, an addiction kind of though. When you use it, you don't want to stop using it. That's just streetwise. Basically, you and all the people within a certain range, such as prove thyself like, uh, will use stuff much slower, at a slower rate. So, flashlights will last longer, toolboxes will last longer, medkits will last longer, all that. For console, I uh, absolutely recommend Feng, unless you want any of the other characters that I have mentioned. She has generator increase capabilities with technician, very nice life, allows the speed bonus from balance landing as said before, but after vaulting a window fast. And alert, which every time the killer damages something, you will see their location, if they are not in stealth mode or whatever. Okay, now that you've chosen your character, it's time to equip some, equip some perks and use them in your first match. But, those perks, you only get three, they're tier one, and you only have one perk slot, such as on my meg here. Well... To, to get more perk slots, you're going to have to see level 5, level 10, and level 15. You can do all that in the blood web here, but it's going to take some grinding. And you're going to need some blood points, which you get from doing actions inside the match, playing better, and all that stuff. First of all, you're going to want to equip the perk of your choice, such as, I'd say, if you're running Meg for the first time, like I will use Meg in this match, use Adrenaline or... Sprint burst. I would recommend adrenaline, most likely, because it it will heal you one health state instantly. It doesn't if you're on the ground and then exit gates activate, you will instantly heal off the ground and you gain a speed bonus. So I will go into a game, gold three. You will never see this on any other buddy's channel unless they're big time crazy going for a challenge or something gold three going into a match with one perk once you've found your match you're gonna probably want to just double check over what you can do if you have blood points i'd say this is a time or in your other just the lobby start investing into your character get more perks through the blood web and you unlock more items and offerings add-ons too. Very nice. But you can also customize your character while waiting too if you have any cosmetics. Such as I guess I do on Meg. As soon as the timer, do not worry about this. This just locks your ready position in place. Once it hits 5 seconds, you will be locked in with whatever you have. So do not forget that. If you are editing or editing your class, doing any of that stuff on a low countdown, make sure to keep in mind of that five seconds. Okay, so now you've loaded into your first match. Let's start playing the game. So, you're gonna notice these things around the map called hooks. They you will end up on them eventually. No matter what, no matter how good you are, no matter how bad you are, you will end up on them and you will find these things called generators. Same thing I am working on. A skill check will appear every random periods of time. And as you saw before, see, you have to hit that, that little white space is a great skill check and the rest of the blank space is a good skill check. If you hit a good skill check, it'll increase, I think, I don't, I'm not sure the rates on how much they increase for each great or good skill check you hit, but you have to hit space or whatever your budget is when they pop up. And if you fail them, well, the generator will go boom, and it'll alert your killer to your location. And that's not good. And when you get into chase, such as like right now, Actually, never mind. Killer didn't come after me. The killer will have a variety of different skill sets varying on who you're going against. Right now, I'm playing against the knight, and the knight can summon his guards to go do some other things that 
are very annoying to survivors. But, as aside with that, you're just, the main objective down there in the bottom left is get five generators done and then the exit gates will activate. Exit gates are along the walls of the map and you have to hold down a switch at the exit gate for 30 seconds, can be boosted with perks, um, and then it'll open and you can escape the trial. But for now, you have to get generators done. I'd say there's two places two play styles you can play like you could be generator generator focused and stay on a generator a lot which will be very helpful to the team you always need someone that's like that on the team because you're gonna have to get the generators done if you want to survive but and you can avoid the killer if you want with this play style or you can run the killer with this play style Running will take practice to learn loops and all that, to run tiles, all that stuff. But that will just develop with time, skill, watching other people play, seeing your teammates, seeing how other people play, all that. Or you could try and take the killer on a run and you can just do a basically distraction while your teammates do generator. Also, another detail to point out, you see these red boxes? These are lockers. They're randomly placed all around, or it's not randomly, I'd say, but they are placed all around the map, and you can hide in them. If you hide in them, uh, the killer cannot see you with a aura reading perk if you're inside one of them, because you have the blindness effect on you, meaning you cannot also aura read your teammate with your perks, which is kind of annoying. See, as you go in one, on the right side of my screen, my status effects will show. And it's a little eye, and there's many other status effects in the game that do different things each. But, also, there is fast actions. Fast faulting, and fast entering lockers. And, uh... So those are the same as blowing up a generator. They will tell the killer where your location is. But one last key component of the game is pallets. Pallets are crucial to looping and getting away from the killer. If you drop a pallet on a killer, it will stun them. And if you don't drop it on the killer, well, you're not going to stun them. They could break the pallet when it's down. But when they get stunned, I believe it's three, three seconds they get stunned for. And during that time period, they can't do anything. They will play an animation of being stunned. And they will have to recover out of those three seconds. Then, they can do whatever they want. And when you're... Okay, time to go over hooks. Sorry, I kind of forgot about that detail. But, with hooks, it's it's simple. Basically, you have two hook, three hooks you can go on. First hook, you can attempt three times to get off. Can be increased with additional perk. But, if you can attempt three times off the hook, I believe it's a 4% chance each time you attempt. Can be increased with perks and offerings, too. Actually, I think only offerings. But you can attempt, which I do not recommend. It's a very low chance to get off. And, or you could just sit there and wait for your team, which is always the best idea. It's the simplest, it's the easiest, what you'd probably want to do. And if you get hooked a second time, you will go into the struggle phase. Struggle phase, meaning you will have to hit skill checks to keep buying yourself time. Third hook, you're gone, basically. There's also these things, one of these spawn every game, every map, called the basement. The basement has four unbreakable hooks, and after you die on a hook or get sacrificed on a hook, these hooks will get destroyed, except for these hooks, not the hooks in the basement. But, yeah. Oh yeah. Last thing, I'm pretty sure, is healing. 
healing your teammates. So you can see on the left side who is injured. And it'll be very obvious when you meet a person that is injured. Because they will be groaning. They will be spewing out pools or have pools of blood trailing them. And it'll just be very obvious. You can heal these people by hitting skill checks, such like a generator. But you can also be healed, obviously. You can self-heal with med kits or self-care perk. And yeah. Sorry, I had to take a pause there because I had to predict what was going on. But healing, simple. See, now I am injured, and there's a dying state, which is same as healing, but you will be crawling on the floor, and killers can pick you up, then carry you to a hook. Or carry you to the hatch if they're nice, and you're the last person. Right, like right now, I'm playing more of the generator style, runaway mixed with being able to loop. Like, if I have to loop, I will loop, but if I don't have to, I won't need to. Right now, I'm trying to find a crate to heal or a person to heal me. That is best what to do if you are new and you are not sure that you can run the killer fully. Once you become much greater at the game, uh, you can probably run and make builds all around being injured. But for now, I'm not going to be doing that because I'm running one perk not too not too good not too good at all it's being injured but we gotta find the last generator we don't want to go on the hook and we want to be able to keep an eye on your teammates at all as much as possible this game is a game of info knowledge like info knowledge no. and <coughs> oh, okay info knowledge, knowledge. and uh, and skill of course but info is keeping tabs on where your teammates are what they're doing so you know what you can be doing or what they can be doing and keeping tabs on the killer so you don't get hunted instantly oh hey see there's there's adrenaline kick again Meaning we got a super speed boost, and this door is probably being opened already. Yeah, so we're gonna go back, save the kill, or not save the killer, save the survivor on the hook. And also, I have the insta down effect, which kind of sucks. It's called exposed. It's as you can see the skull on the right side where my status effects are displayed. This guy might have the perfect. Oh, jeez, that's not good. Now we're being hunted, and we're getting pushed right to the exit gate. What you want to do against people, or with, and when the exit gates are activated, is probably 99 the gate and wait for your team to show up. And when you hit, you can just tap that exit gate for 1%, literally less than a second long. 